Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you live from a sunny I-71 North in lovely North Central Ohio. This is another episode of Tesla Tidbits, and this is the How Right Was I with my Model 3 Predictions show. We're going to start off with the fact that the presentation itself left a lot to be desired. I mean, really, the only thing we got out of the presentation was the fact that uh, of, of what the range was and what the price, the base price for those ranges would be. We really didn't get anything else out of the presentation, which was actually really disappointing. I was hoping they would kind of take us through the new screen, uh, how exactly things worked on that new screen, you know, some sort of a presentation on that. Um, you know, how autopilot exactly works would be nice considering they've changed how that whole control setup works. Uh, the new scroll wheels on the steering wheel that now apparently go left and right in some manner. Um, all these things would have been really nice to have in the presentation. Instead, and I can kind of see why, you know, doing this, they did, they just let the media and the, and the uh, press kind of handle that. And really, it's just not as... You know, Tesla's got a very polished presentation style, and having them do that would have been really, really nice. But I digress. Uh, let's get to the predictions. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let's start with range, since we were there anyway. And how about this? So, it's been confirmed to a couple of outlets, at least, that Tesla is kind of trying to get away from putting anything about the kilowatt hour uh, capacity into the car, like giving that information out to customers, saying that it's, they felt that it was confusing for consumers and that all that really mattered was the range of the car, which I'll kind of give them, uh, but it still, you know, would be nice, you know, what's the badging going to look like? Because we haven't seen any badging on Model 3 at all. Maybe they're just not going to put badging on Model 3, who knows? Uh, but for the badging purposes, it would be nice to just like, you know, I've got a Model S P85D, uh, or not P80, oh, I wish it was a P85D, a Model S 85D, someone else has got a Model S 100D, you know, other people have a, a Model X 75D, you know, that badging is really nice to, to differentiate things, especially when you're going to charge, to sell the car later, possibly, it's just quick shorthand to be able to say to know that number is the you know higher or lower battery capacity. But again, so what matters to Tesla? Well, I was wrong on both sides of this equation. The base battery pack in the car, whatever you, uh, that might be as far as kilowatt hours, is going to have a 220 mile range. Uh, I had predicted 240 uh, on the uh, prediction show. And boy, is that disappointing. Um, I, I know, I know they're they're making this economy, uh, but as I'll get into later, I, I just feel like they're really they made a thirty five they made a car that's capable of being priced at thirty five thousand dollars. But this is a forty five thousand dollar car if you if you really want a good car. Um, now I know Elon said that it's still a very good car at thirty five thousand dollars and. But we'll get into it a little bit later. Uh, so on the top side, I had predicted 280 being the the top end, and that's with the D. Uh, but then, what a pleasant surprise here! 310 on the top side, and that's just with rear, rear wheel drive. The D on this will probably get you another 10 miles or so on it. So we'll probably get about 320 out of the the dual motor on this. So don't know what black magic they did there. Uh, but kudos on that on that front because uh, that that's just a wonderful and actually the upgrade uh, difference so the if you just got a base car with that extended range battery that's forty four thousand dollars base price uh, so a nine thousand dollar difference which is a lot better than Model S and Model X right now if you upgrade a battery pack on Model S and Model X you're paying fairly dearly for that upgrade so kudos on that uh, that that's fantastic. Um, a little bit uh, related to this is the curb weight of the car. I was digging into Tesla's uh, media kit 
uh, that they released related to this. And remember, back in episode one of Tidbits from the Road, I said that I thought that they would get Model 3 under 4,000 pounds curb weight uh, compared to its hefty older sibling in the Model S that was, I, I think it was 4,400 for the 75, which was the... Uh, what the software limited 60 could get to, which was what we thought would be the battery pack in the Model 3. So it turns out that the base Model 3 curb, rate, curb weight is a very svelte 3,549 pounds, svelte by Tesla standards at least. Uh, and even the long range battery, which is what they're designated, they call it Model 3 long range in the materials, is still only 3,814 pounds. That, folks, is a, for the range on that car and the battery that's in there, that is a really, really light vehicle uh, for, for the battery pack that it's carrying around. Superb engineering job, guys. So now that I've, I've told you how wrong I was on one of the major things on Model 3, let's get to a couple of things that I nailed. And let's start with the way that you access the car. So I had predicted beforehand that the little card that we've been seeing was, was actually a backup to the fact that you would just use the app to do everything for the car. And mm, let me pat myself on the back on that one. That is exactly what they did. The card is meant to be uh, more for a valet situation or maybe uh, a friend or spouse that might not have the app installed that needs to drive the car for some reason. And actually, it's kind of interesting. It was one of the reasons that I said that I didn't think that that card would be how you would access the front. Uh, was because they didn't have near-field uh, technology in any vehicle, and that would be a new thing. And it turns out they did add near-field technology to the car for, excuse me, for that card. Uh, it's not operating the way that the FOBs do in Model S and Model X, where just being in range is handling it. Um, if you're using the card to access the car, the way that you get in is actually on the outside of the car. You, you tap it uh, on the B pillar right below the autopilot camera. And then to start the car, they, now this has never been shown, it's been said in words, but not actually shown. Apparently down here between the seats, there's a little spot that you tap to activate the car and turn it on. Uh, but the app itself will work kind of like uh, the home, the smart home locks. I don't know if you guys have seen any of those, and I kind of mentioned this in the, uh, in the Tesla Tidbit show that um, you know you just kind of you have an app that's installed on your phone you walk up to the lock you just tap the lock and that initiates a Bluetooth low energy communication with your phone it authenticates and then the lock will open that's the same idea with how the Model 3 is going to work with your phone you just walk up to the car and I don't think there's gonna be anything to tap though it should work the same way that the fobs do right now in Model S and Model X you just walk up and and actually come to think of it, if they put any electronics into the door handles, that might be what actually in initiates the communication. But regardless, the end result is you just walk up, you pull the handle, and you're into the car. And then you put your brake foot on the brake, and that starts the car, just like the, the rest of the Tesla line. Another thing that I was super right about um, was the speed control for TAC and autopilot. Now, this one, unless you were paying super careful attention, probably would have slipped by everybody. But if you look at the render that Tesla had in the middle of the presentation, which they did break out actually after the fact, so you can see just the, the interior presentation, but the render of the screen shows that they've got autopilot enabled or tag one of the two I can't, can't remember which it was but you see a left and right arrow right right below the the speed the speedometer on on the screen and right there you have it that that is how you're going to adjust your speed for autopilot and tack 
Um, as to if one of your scroll wheels can be set, if the right scroll wheel can be set to more conveniently handle that, um, that will have to wait until we actually get some people with some hands on Model 3 because, again, their presentation was a bit lacking. Now, maybe we can find a Model 3 manual somewhere that'll let us know what's going to be able to be assigned to that right scroll wheel, but we'll see what we get out of that. So let's get back and finish up where I was absolutely wrong on another prediction. Um, there will indeed be a premium upgrades package on this car. Um, but let's also talk about the complete ambiguity that Tesla has kind of left us with, with what comes standard on the car. Now, when you look at the premium upgrades package, you see a list of everything that's included. Um, but they don't necessarily, on the standard features list, line up the equivalent in the standard features. So a good example of what I'm talking about here is the premium upgrades package lists 12-way power seats as part of that package, but it doesn't tell you in the standard list of features what type of seat comes with the car. And so in the absence of information, I'm kind of left to wonder, are we getting manual controlled seats on a $35,000 base, base price car? I really hope not. Now, Super patron Lee Sweet out there, thank you Lee for the contact this morning, uh, does mention that, hey, well maybe it's a, a six-way power seat instead of a 12-way power seat. And Lee, I, I really hope you're right, uh, like I told you on Twitter this morning, because uh, to have manual control anything on a car whose base price is $35,000 is just a huge misstep in my opinion. Um, but on lastly, kind of, let's talk about options pricing. One of the pleasant surprises in option pricing, uh, as we already know, black is the only color that doesn't cost you anything. But the colors that do cost you anything, and that's the same, it's the same color lineup that's for Model S and Model X, your multi-coat colors, the pearl white and the multi-coat red, multi-coat red, um, on the Model S and Model X are a $1,500 cost, but on Model 3, it's the same cost as every other color, which is fantastic for those for those beautiful multi-coat uh, paint jobs. Um, we didn't get to see any all-wheel drive pricing because they haven't done anything with that other than to say you should not expect all-wheel drive before the middle of next year. Uh, the configurator, uh, not the configurator, but there is a, a, a delivery estimator on the Model 3 section of Tesla's website. It is not in your My Tesla account. You got to go to the Model 3 section while being signed into your My, Te my Tesla. And when you click on check my delivery estimate, it'll show you. Uh, but if you want all wheel drive, you're waiting till mid next year, not Q1. It's middle of next year, if I re recall correctly. So we don't get a, a cost on the all-wheel drive, uh, but we, what we do get a cost on, one of the few options that we do get on the car, is autopilot. And many folks out there, straight delusional in my opinion, somehow thought that the autopilot feature on Model 3 would be priced less than autopilot on Model S and X. It's the same hardware, guys, and as a result, it is the same price. Uh, $5,000 for enhanced autopilot and $3,000 for the full self-driving kit. So I think that about covers the Model 3 launch event. Overall, I, I hate to say that I'm disappointed with the launch, um, because overall this is still a wonderful car. But between the, the kind of restrictions put on what's able to be ordered, because right now, literally the only thing you can order if you want it immediately, you've got to get a rear wheel drive, extended, bat extended range battery with the premium upgrades package. That's your only option 
if you want to get it right now. And that base cost is $49,000. And they will let you choose color and wheel type, which is kind of where Elon was going when he was talking about in the uh, investor call that, yeah, when the, when the uh, configurator is online, you basically are going to choose your wheel, co your wheel type and color because that's, that's exactly what, what's happening right now. Um, the range super was super disappointing to me. I, I really, like, I didn't think they would necessarily beat the bolt with the base range, which is another thing that I was warning folks about, that not to necessarily expect the base car to beat the bolt. But never in my wildest imagination did I believe that that car would get less than 230 miles on its base range. Um, 220 is really disappointing especially when you consider the fact that um, your everyday charging gen at most you're generally going to do 90 percent for your everyday charging and 90 percent of 220 is 198 uh, so the car doesn't even technically uh, not technically it doesn't realistically get more than 200 miles range um, it's close and it's just kind of a psychological bear but psychologically talking here it, it's it's a disappointment um, but then we did have the the awesome surprise in the the extended range the car looks gorgeous the tech in the car um, you know I did mention on the the flagship show about how you control the the, the single vent that we've been talking about since the release of the car or since the reveal of the car uh, basically you kind of bring up a little screen and point to where you wanted to direct the air and it just does it uh, which is really super cool um, so so there was a lot to be happy about but I just kind of get a feeling and maybe this is a, a, a product of getting a tease of the car so soon and then having to wait about 18 months to get the final result and the final result just isn't quite what I think everyone was expecting um, and especially given the fact that some folks out there are going to be waiting not even well into next year but into 2019 to be getting their cars uh, so that's also a big wet blanket on the party too so that's it for this tidbits from the road. Again, I as always, I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, if you do super enjoy the show, feel free to give a like and a subscribe here on YouTube. I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, getting those numbers up there does help spread the reach of the show. Um, and if you uh, feel so led, uh, please do check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Tesla Tidbits. Uh, if you want to give a look, you know, I always say on the flagship show, the show operates on a value for value model. Uh, so if you get value out of what I'm bringing you all the time, uh, do consider giving me a little value back for, for my efforts out here. Uh, and as always, thanks again to my super patrons that are contributing back $10 a month worth of value or more. Uh, you'll see them on a card at the end of the show. So that wraps it up for this time, and until we meet again, keep it charged and hit the road.